Let's look at culpability or mens rea from another angle. The issue of culpability typically comes up where there is evidence that the accused was mistaken about some material fact or unaware of it. The evidence may consist simply in the accused's statements or testimony, as in the note case of State v. Kelly on pages 422-23 in the Kadish case book. Kelly was a contractor. He dealt with a certain Mr. Bradley who purported to own two unoccupied houses. Bradley asked Kelly to remove oaken mantelpieces from the houses and sell them for him as salvage. Kelly did so and netted $40 for his efforts. It turned out that Mrs. Bradley owned the houses, not Mr. Bradley. She complained and Kelly was charged with larceny of the mantelpieces. In his defense, Kelly testified Mr. Bradley had represented to him that the houses and contents were his and his alone. Recall that the model penal code tells us mistake is always relevant where it tends to negate the culpability required to establish any material element of the offense. Wherever the defendant wants the fact finder to consider his ignorance or mistake, our analysis immediately turns to the task of identifying the element or elements and the culpability required to establish it. The offense is larceny. The material elements are taking another's property without proper consent. Culpability is clearly required to be shown as to the conduct element, taking. For example, Someone leaves your book bag in your car and you drive off with it. You have taken the bag, but not culpably, if you did not know the bag was in your car. Likewise, culpability has to be shown as to the property of another element. If you own a black book bag and pick up my black book bag by mistake, you cannot be convicted of larceny. Should the without consent element be any different? The appellate court, in reversing Kelly's conviction, saw no difference. The Kelly court wrote, One who takes property in good faith, honestly believing he has the right to take it, is not guilty of larceny, even though he is mistaken. What if the jury thought that Kelly's mistake was not entirely innocent? that Kelly should have been suspicious that Bradley, for example, had to ask Kelly to break into the houses to get the mantelpieces. The court explains why that did not matter. For he lacks the intent to steal required for larceny, even though his mistaken but honest belief was unreasonable. So intent is the required culpability that the court insists be proven as to each material element. Moreover, a mistaken belief need not be reasonable to negate intent. An honest belief negates intent, even if a reasonable person would have known better or inquired further. Let's look at the way the word intent works here. The model penal code translates intent into purpose. The common law meaning was broader. Intent meant purpose or knowledge. The difference between purpose and knowledge can be subtle. Its importance will not emerge until we get to the so-called attempt crimes. Let's now turn from larceny, a property offense, to rape, a very serious crime against the person. The casebook we use has gone through many editions and almost as many editors. Along the way, the case of Regina versus Morgan has been whittled down to a mere nubbin. Let me fill you in on its facts. Morgan was an officer in the Royal Air Force. Over drinks at a pub, he persuaded three junior men to go with him to his residence to have intercourse with his wife. Morgan told the three that his wife was kinky and would feign resistance in order to get turned on. They claimed to have believed him. 
The three junior men were convicted of rape as principals. Morgan himself could not be convicted as a principal because at the time wives were deemed to consent to intercourse with their husbands at his pleasure. Morgan was convicted, however, as an accomplice. The three junior officers appealed. The issue on appeal was the relevance of the defendant's testimony that they believed they had their victim's consent. The answer was determined by considering the doctrine of mens rea as applicable to the offense of rape. The elements of rape, in short, are sexual intercourse with a female other than one's wife without her consent. Culpability of some kind must, of course, be shown as to the first two elements. The issue is the third element, non-consent. If culpability has to be shown, as with the case of larceny, what kind? Purpose, knowledge, recklessness, negligence? Or should the element of non-consent be excluded from the requirement of culpability, perhaps on the ground that extramarital intercourse is already a moral wrong, as under the, the Bramwell moral wrong approach we considered in the Prince case? In our next video, we'll look further into this case.